Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Codex Station's Comic Character of the Week. And we lost Gary. Oh, yeah. we lost Gary. Anyhow, I, I am Sal. I'm your host today. I am Sal the Slab Guy. Down below by himself is Dan the Man Kelly. You can always find him on different places and Instagram. And over here, we got J-Dub himself. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. And if Gary could get on and join us here, is he ready to come back into the show? I'm going to check. He Gary, come back into the show. Come back into the show. Uh-oh. He's frozen again. Nope. Wait. He's working. Up, nope. Up, and he's up, out. Up, up. Hold on. All right. I hear you. Is he back? We are. are you back? All right. This is getting... Attention, Gary. Uh-oh. Ridiculous. I'm there. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, there's some technical difficulties at the Library of Congress tonight. <laughs> it's it's all that bag and board static just screwing up his connection. It's the it's the mylars. I'm telling you right now, it's the mylars. At least we know it keeps the radio waves out. <laughs> That's also true. Sorry, I'm not alive. That is so true. Oh, is... Yeah. So all right, all let's right. just go ahead and just keep, start going let's around. Yeah. Oh, he's. Yep, they know. His video is really bad. Right. There you go. I'm going to the fire. All right. Just, I'm going to see if I can make um, we'll, that one. Okay. He's got, he's got to go to the phone, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go to the phone. Yep. All right. Yep. Go to the phone. And I guess you want to wait on introductions, or do you want to start talking about ah. it now? Or what do you want to do? We can do introductions. All right. Let's start with me, then. I am your host, Sal the Slab Guy, and you can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Common Corner and also under Instagram as the Slab Guy 77 Down below, Dan the Man. Kelly, why don't you tell people where they can find you at? You can find me on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art, and uh, I think that's my handle on Twitter, too, though I don't really do much on there. But, uh, yeah, check me out, and... Um, come like some posts, come give me a follow. I'm working my way towards 800, so... Come help me out. And then this guy right above me. Right over here. Whoop, whoop. Right there. There right he is. There. There he is. I'm here. I'm right here. Yeah, check us out on the Kodak Station. We're on all the socials, as you can tell, down there. Um, getting ready for that 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Going forward with that. Can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Hold on a second. Why are you blurry? Why are you very blurry? Uncle Gary, Uncle Gary screwed it all up for everybody. Oh gosh! There, there you go. Yeah, there. It's a little bit better, but all right. Jamie's a little out of focus, but that's okay. We're going to move on. While waiting for Uncle Gary to come back online, Dan, why don't you tell us who we are covering tonight? We are covering the Mad Titan Thanos, or Thanos. or as um, Sal, if you want to say, it, as Tim would pronounce it, Thanos. Hold on. Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it right. Gotta do it right. do it right. Yes, indeed. Like I said, before the movie came out and people knew how to pronounce the name, you knew there were a ton of fanboys out there that were calling him Thanos. Thanos. The movie comes out and they're like, oh, is that Oh, it? yeah. That has pronounced. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, just, just carry on. <laughs> Oh, no. Are I can't we... begin this. It, 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 this one was... I know it was my pick, but it was a tough pick all around for me. Really? Pretty. It was. It was. There's a lot of good stories out with him, and I can't wait to see your guys' choices tonight. Yeah. So go ahead and give us the give us give, give us the rundown on him, Dan. All right. Well, he first appeared all the way back in February of 1973 in Iron Man 55, oddly enough, created by Jim Starlin. And the reason that he appeared in Iron Man is because Starlin was working as a fill-in artist on that, and he thought, well, my career could end next week, so I'm going to put all these characters I created in here so at least I've got, you know, at least there's something there. So he's got a long history, but basic boils down to he is a member of the Titans, you know, these godlike beings that live off in space. Um, he is the son of their leader mentor. He is the brother of Star Fox, who is an Avenger. Um, he carries one of the deviant genes in him. So if you've seen the Eternals movie, they are the uh, evil ones, the ones that are the enemies of the Eternals and also enemies of the Titans. So that made his appearance what it is. Um, when he was born, his mother tried to kill him. Um, 
thinking that, you know, he's going to cause doom. And the father stopped him. As an adolescent, he developed a fascination and a love for death. And he eventually ended up wiping out the majority of the Titans, uh, became one of the biggest threats in the Marvel Universe. His powers, I mean, he's got superhuman strength, speed, stamina, invulnerability, um, immortality. He can absorb and project cosmic energy. Um, he's capable of telekinesis and telepathy. He can manipulate matter. Uh, he can live indefinitely without food or air or water. Uh, he's immune to most diseases. Uh, he has a high resistance to psychic assaults. Um, he's an accomplished hand-to-hand -hand combatant, and he gets these powers from what Titans normally have and from um, enhancements that he may do himself over the years. So all around, he is a major threat and someone that you really don't want to mess with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. We've all are waiting on Gary. And before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsor. And that is W Energy. So you need to go over to, to www.wgg, enter the word code hyphen oh. X at checkout and save 10% on that order. <laughs> it's a good, clean energy drink, as now Jamie's displaying the packages right there, trying to chew on them, especially. That, I'm actually drinking something. That's not, like you, that's not the recommended way to consume it, Jamie. That is I true. Sure that is true. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it burns really bad. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a good, clean energy drink. There's no bad aftertaste. There's no jitters, and there's no crash afterwards. You must check it out. Use the code word, code X, code hyphen X, and save 10% on that order. Yes, all of us here at the Codex Station do use it. It gives us the energy we need to get through these shows and give you the best of us we can. I actually use it to get through the day at work day. I don't use it for the show. I don't need it for the show. Show yeah. comes around, I'm pumped. I'm, like, ah! well, I'm, I'm pumped, too, is the fact, though, it's like that little extra boop. Yep. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sal's pumped too until the shows get late and then he's sitting there like this. Oh, I know. Yeah, Come on. Pumped until they got rid of Monkey Madness. <laughs> yeah, they got rid of Monkey Madness. It's very. I actually uh, when that the last order I did with them, they were like giving away something. They were like, if they email us, you can get this giveaway. I'm like, sure. So go ahead and give me the giveaway. It was just another free tumbler. And I'm yeah. like, and I yeah. actually included my email. <laughs> Why did you get rid of Monkey Madness? Bring that back. But they didn't respond to that. Yeah. I just blow them up on X and everything else that you can social media wise. They'll be like, oh, we have a oh. fan. All right. Do we want to wait or do we want to go ahead and just dive right into Let's it? Let's dive right in. And if Uncle Gary does get back, we'll get his answers at that point. You want All right. So X and see yeah. you uh, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. So we're going to go on to our segment of. What scenarios work best with this character? And I had Gary lined up to go first. So, Jamie, I have chosen you. Why don't you no, tell okay. us what works best with this character? It, Since this is your pick. Yeah. I mean, with with, the, with Thanos, it's unlimited power. Like, he is probably one of the strongest entities in all of Marvel Comics. I mean, across the board, it he is the Mad Titan. He is inevitable. He Anything he touches crumbles in his hands. And yep. that's what he needs to be at that point. He doesn't need to be anything any more or any less. He just needs to be that deviant villain that we all know and came to love. Even though the depiction of him in the MCU is completely different than what the original is. Very different. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some similarities, but not not the same when it comes to the comics. Not the same motivation, which is a major, yes. major thing with him. Yes. yes. We do. Oh, Gary's on it. Okay. Uh, he was back. I saw him yeah, in the, the uh, like, backstage. So, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, like, we have a backstage. We bring you people in on. With the shirts or the stuff when they're like, Thanos was right. And, like, you need to read a comic book and then decide. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. tell me if you still think that. The only time yeah. I actually laughed about it and was like, okay, maybe, was the Hawkeye series. And Jay, Hawkeye was drinking from the mug that Thanos was right. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> I love how he went to them real fast, side tangent. I love how he went to the, like, the a memorial of everyone who, like, passed away. And then the next scene is, is him drinking out of that mug. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know. 
All right, so uh, while Gary's still uh, struggling there, Dan, why don't you go ahead and go next and give us uh, – oh, I'm sorry, Jamie, were you done? With your, yeah, with your, go ahead. Okay, awesome. Dan, go ahead and give us your best uh, scenarios. Yeah, uh, kind of right along with, with Jamie. Um, I like – you know, he's just loaded with power. So I like when it's him going against – you know, it's cool when it's – you know, he, even before, um, you know, like Infinity Gauntlet and all that, like he would go against Silver Surfer. He would go against Adam Warlock. You know, even further back it would be against um, Captain Marvel. So I mm-hmm. like that, but he works best when it's him against everybody. When yeah. it's like the Avengers and the X Men and the Defenders and the Fantastic Four and everyone like teamed up against him, going after him and mm-hmm. still struggling. So I think that's when he works best. And also when he's using his um, his cunning too. Like yeah, he's overloaded with power, but he's smart too and he's strategic. So he doesn't just rely on. Brute strength just to get through it. Yeah, he doesn't rely on brute force. He has his intellect that he uses and then has the brute force to back up whatever his plans are. Right. Absolutely. All right. So for for me, I you guys hit all my points. You know, he he's unlimited power. He's he's a cunning strategist. He's he's just a freaking lunatic too. I mean, come on, you know, this that's what works best with him. If you know his motivation and and you've seen the movies and you don't know what's in the comic book. I'm going to just go tell you right now. Yeah. He's in love with death. Death personified. He thinks that if he kills enough people, death will actually be falling in love with him. Period. End of story. Yeah. He's just got this romantic relationship with death and that's just insane. But yes, he's just he's just being a badass all around, you know. He's he's been compared to be maybe on the same level as Dark Side, you know. You see all those, you know, comic book rooms where people are like, who would win a fight? Well, they always match up Dark Side with Thanos, and you know, that's a pretty that's a pretty even or a pretty strong character on the DC side to be compared with, you know. Yeah. So for me, yeah, just being a complete badass, and I also agree with you, Dan, about when he is against everybody. I mean, because it oh, takes everybody. When it's, to take when it's down. the whole team, it makes more sense, and that's probably why when we get to the reasons why they suck, I'm going to have a whole field day on that. <laughs> All, all right, right I see. All we're right. gonna try to bring in Uncle Gary real fast. All right, do it. I'll say too. It's funny right, that you about it. what you what you said about Dark Side is Starlin said that when he created Thanos originally, he had him looking more like based on the design, you know, because he was thinking about the new gods when he did it, and his design was based more on Metron, and he had him thin, he had him like in the chair and stuff, and when he finally introduced him. Um, I forget who the editor was at Marvel that told him. It's like, well, if you're going to rip, he was like, bulk him up. If you're going to rip off one of the new guys, rip off the best one. And that's Roy why. Thomas. So, um, so Dark Side and, and Metron were definitely two big influences on, you know, on the physical appearance of them. It was Roy yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Roy there Thomas. you go. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Gary, Gary welcome to the show. You know, you know that show, I just aged I, five years. I just aged five years with doing this tech. Don't show. don't worry about it. Let me let me give the audience a proper introduction. <laughs> coming to you live from the I'm gonna say not the not the Library of Congress now. The coming American. to you live from the basement. From the ba- from the archives. From the archives, from the, deep in the archives. From we the have archives. Uncle Gary. Welcome right. to the show, Uncle Gary. How you doing? Thank you. Doing <laughs> all right now. A little little less stressed now, maybe. Hopefully I'll stay in. Sometimes when we have internet problems, the library is not the best area of conductivity or yeah. connectivity or whatever. You so. are so much better right now than you yeah. were. Yeah, you are. So, you are. So, so why, don't you, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you at, Uncle Gary, really quick? Uh, right now, I'm in a state of delirium. Yeah. <laughs> in the basement. That's in what the, we're calling In the now. basement. Yeah. So you Thanks. can find me every... Uh, you can find me on Wednesdays at uh, the only comic book store in Loudoun County, Virginia, Comic Logic. We hope you'll come by and see us. You can catch me every Wednesday, get my weekly fix. You can also catch us on um, October 29th, Sunday, October 29th. We're having our semi annual lock con. Sal will be there with his family. I'll be there, and, yeah. Oh, you're going to be there too? Oh, that's great yeah, news. Yeah. Damn, this first start. Awesome. And we'll also have Trunk or Treat. You bringing the family too with you? Uh, I will. Probably have my daughter with me. My wife is coming yep. back from 
working uh, gotcha. from being out of town for work that week. So I don't know what time she'll come in. Okay. Well, having maybe. your daughter is very important. Having your daughter is very important. We'll do a truck or treat. We'll have about 20 or 20, 25 vendors there that we set up in our parking lot. There'll be books. There'll be toys. There'll be jewelry. There'll be local authors, local artists. So please come down for Comic Logic Lockdown. And you can also catch my comic character of the day where I put I post the covers of the day. Today we did a Keith Giffen um, tribute cover. So it might, might be a few more this week for, for Giffen, who had given us a lot of great art. So that's where you can Absolutely. find me. And now I'm back here with my bros at uh, Codex. Thanks for hanging with me, fellas. I appreciate it. Yeah, always no the problem. real the real YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the the real channel. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, Gary, why don't if you it, go ahead and give us a? Oh, sorry, Jamie. What's up? I was gonna say real fast. If anyone jumps into the Comic Logic live stream, you probably see me in there too talking. Oh, <laughs> so. yeah, absolutely. And and you know, Rob was just Rob was just messing with you. I know. Week. I laughed so hard because I was sitting in my car at work, and I'm like, oh, they're live, and I was like, wait, Uncle Gary's. He's on the wrong channel. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the other thing that was funny, see, you, you, having you two go back and back, that took me back in the day where I used to have gals fighting over me. So that was great. Yeah, that, oh, he was if here. That, if, he if, was if that friend. flatters you, I am happy to oblige. Oh, I'm just yeah. letting you know right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He was with me first, you know. So that was, <laughs> Rob, 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 so that was. Uh, you know what they Rob. say. If you have feelings for two people, choose the second one because there's a reason you chose the second one over the first. <laughs> oh, shit. That but, hurt, Rob. but Gary, <laughs> Jamie will Rob love you long it. time. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll even wear the bandana. <laughs> hey, listen, yep. you, you know why I'm with both channels? Because there's they're a amazing. lot of to go around, baby. Yes. <laughs> you just you just got to look at it when he's on the other thing and just bust out the uh, princess bo- bro- uh, princess bride quote. Be like, you're trying to kidnap what I've rightfully stolen. Totally stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Indeed. Indeed. Exactly. So let me see if this helps. Uh, oh, nope, that's too harsh. Oh, oh there, there you go. Oh, look better, at that. Better. How you doing? There you go. A little better. Right, we can see you better now. All right, a little better. Right. So you know, it was West, it was West a journey. Jumping. And yep. look, and this and that's a long that's a long journey from all the way up there to all the way down here. So yeah. y- y'all have been, y'all know it's a journey. It's a process. You got to get that fireman's pole. You can just go straight down, <laughs> right to the bat cave, man. Yeah, indeed. What's going on, indeed. Wes? Good to see you, buddy. All righty, so um, where do you want me to jump in on the Thanos stuff? I know you already did. Thanos. It's Thanos. Thanos. (laughs) (laughs) What's up, Wes? How you doing, buddy? Glad you joined us tonight. All right, so we are doing the uh, scenarios of what works best for this guy. So tell us your your, your input on that. What I think works best for Thanos, Thanos. see, it's a love story. It's a boy who's in love with a girl. Oh, it just so happens to be able to kill you. Happens to be deaf. <laughs> it's a boy in love with a girl that happens to be deaf. And I think we've all been there, right? You know, at some point. Right. So I I like that aspect of him better. I know for the movies they gave it more of a political thing where the overpopulation, blah, blah, blah. But I really dig the fact that he's just this twisted individual that is infatuated with death. And will do anything to curry her favor. And that means bringing more souls to her. And I think that twisted love and that twisted need of his to be loved by the most unobtainable one out there. I, that's what I like best about Thane. That's the, that's that's the part of the story I like best. I mean, I understand that the other version played much better for the um marvel for the you know for, for movies, the avengers yeah. movies but yes i like the twisted love story and that he's doing it all to curry favor with her so that that's what i think works best for him that he's just you know he's a mad titan for a reason he's madly in love you know he's madly <laughs> in love with a skull-faced wench <laughs> amazing amazing we were, all right. just, we were just uh we were just talking about that how you know, the people that have only seen the movies when they have, like, the shirts and stuff that say Thanos was right. And I'm like, just read a comic book, and then you tell me if you think you, you know, if you still think that. And I'll tell you that you're a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, well, right. It's it's just the love it, story, he's, He loves her so much, he's willing to kill for her. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. We here at the Codex Station do not condone killing of any type. <laughs> 
Not even if they deserve it's it. My dreams. Oh, yep. <laughs> oh man. All right. So since we got that now, let's go on to our next segment, which is our three badass moments. And since the since the order got kind of messed up, me, I'll, I'll take it again. It, it is actually. Do you want to go ahead and start? I'll go. Oh, sorry. All right, Jay, give us your three badass moments. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Good. So for my three badass moments, the first one I got comes from Civil War Two, and it was the killing of War Machine, literally punching mm-hmm. a hole through the like. Just it, it. The image on that made me want to read it. It wasn't that great, but just that panel alone of Thanos just snapping. Oh my god, that that was probably one of my favorites. Um, but my ultimate favorite moment, and this is number two, so stay along, <laughs> is stay when long. he tracked, trapped Cyclops' head in the box in Infinity Gauntlet and oh, blew yeah. it up. I hate Cyclops, and that was the best thing that could have ever happened to that character ever in the history of Cyclops. Boo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You have a shirt that says Cyclops is right, so yeah. don't, don't be uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's just a it's just a body without a head. Um, <laughs> and the last one I got is from the seer, or the story arc Thanos wins, and it's when Thanos every morning, every time he gets up, takes the skull of oh, yeah. Ghost Rider and has him do the penance there, and he just watches everything he's ever done and laughs about it. Mm. That's pretty badass. That's pretty badass. That's yeah. pretty badass. Yeah. All right, Dan. How about you? Let's give us your three badass moments. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with um, Silver Surfer issue 45, uh, which I have back here that uh, preceded Infinity Gauntlet, uh, when Memphisto or is um, or Mephisto is um, you know, is trying to manipulate Thanos and. You know, he thinks he's got him. Thanos kind of, you know, Astral Rex goes off, the, does whatever. And then Mephisto is going to go and take the Infinity Gauntlet. And Thanos just comes back and, like, chokes him out. And, is, oh, there goes my chair. And is, uh, is, uh, is you know, because it shows his intelligence. Like, you're not, he's not going to be out. He's not going to be tricked even by, you know. <laughs> um I'm going to go with Annihilation when he fights and beats the Beyonder uh, that enslaves the um, uh, former Galactus Herald, the Fallen One, who, you know, the Heralds of Galactus have a little bit of power themselves, too. So just to go for both of those is just yeah, shows his, his overwhelming power. But the number one one I got to go with is Infinity Gauntlet. I mean... Half the universe gone, like yep. you know, half of all life in existence gone, and yep. you know it's it's pretty hard to, to to top that. Very hard to top that. Very hard. All right, I will go next on this one. And between Jamie and Dan the Man Kelly, my three are taken. So I'll I'll go through them pretty quick. Actually, no, actually I have a different one. I have a different one. Excuse me. Two were taken. One was punching War Machine through the chest. And nobody, that, was, that was just a badass moment for me too. Uh, the other one was um, uh, the where he beats the Beyonder, classic, you know. But one of the ones I have here, um, yeah. And actually, I have a couple more, but that's okay. Uh, where he uses uh, his 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 godly like powers to turn Wolverine's animantium to spongy mush. Ooh. Spongy, uh, spongy uh, mush. Oh, <laughs> what? What well, you don't like that one? What you don't like that one for? Because hmm? it's not Cyclops dying; it's Wolverine. <laughs> oh, <okay>. well, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please check out the Codex Comic Character of the Week, where we cover Cyclops. You'll see Jamie just fawning over Cyclops. That was the most depressing episode I've ever done. That was the <laughs> best episode ever. So go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, and uh, snapping of the fingers, of course, was uh, so you know, I, which I think is the what really that put him on the map. To tell you the truth, honestly, the, that yeah. that gave him the that gave him the, the, the first class power, you might say, that put him, just made this announcement to the world that way. I think the, well, even the non of, non character non comic people would know him from the snap. Yeah, well, well, it, it was like we talked about earlier. It was that dark side Thanos comparison mm-hmm, until mm-hmm. he was able it, until the snap basically. 
That's true. And why didn't the snap take him out? If it was like, you know, random, it could have taken him out as well. Yeah, but it's not going to take out your main antagonist. I mean, that's I'm just, writing. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. If it was random, <laughs> I, I, there was a possibility that he could have been taken out. I got to think that in the wish process, he said, I said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Everyone probably. but me. Everyone, Everyone but me. <laughs> <laughs> and, All right, Uncle Gary, why don't you go ahead, give us your fat-ass moments then. Okay, I will. And, you know, about the, you know, with the dark side equation of, you know, the whole anti-life equation, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, also made its way over to the, uh, to the, um, you know, the Thanos stuff. So y'all were right with all your big cosmic, you know, snapping the fingers and taking out the, the yonder and all that. But, you know, because that's right on the rain. That's it. But I, I decided to focus on those smaller moments just because those others you can't really compete with. So right. these are badass moments, kind of like Jamie's War Machine moment. And, and Sal, your war machine moment on a smaller scale. And that is, we said earlier, this is just a boy that loves a girl, right? <laughs> and, and what's one of the most prevalent feelings? A little bit of jealousy, right? So in Cosmic Powers Unlimited, the Silver Surfer tells Thanos that, you know what? Death has chosen me to be the fella. Thanos does not handle that very well. <laughs> beats the Silver Surfer to death because of jealousy. The Silver Surfer, who is no lightweight, by the way, yeah. beats him to death because of jealousy and then takes his broken, beaten, battered body and presents it to death. Like, you like your boy now? What do you think? <laughs> I think that's pretty badass. I who think who loves you, baby? Yeah, who, who loves, loves you, baby? Uh-huh. This is your new chump? <laughs> This is your new chump. Guess what? I put this up his ass. All right. <laughs> there you go. And it still so lights he, up. And it still <laughs> lights up. You know, it's because he's shiny all over. But anyway, I, I just think that getting back into the crux of the thing is where it's a love story, right? It's twisted love. But that is that is uh, the dark side. Another dark side of that love. Oh, look! I Man. said dark side. See what I did there? Oh, all right. Oh gosh. So another There's smaller the, moment was in Thanos 15. It showed in the future, Thanos keeps the Hulk as a pet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, was, that was the hardest one for me to choose between. It was the penance there and keeping him as a pet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I do like the penance there. I, I think that one is really good, though, Jamie. I do like that. But, yeah, he's got the Hulk on a leash, totally broken, totally broken, kind of like uh, Game of Thrones, Reek. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got him totally broken on a leash. And didn't at one point he feed him Captain America bones or yeah. something? Yeah. Yes. So then the other small moment was in Infinity um, 4, where point blank, Black Bolt's in his face, lets out a like a planet leveling scream. And mm-hmm. Thanos just takes it with some. Um, wardrobe damage, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and then just beats <laughs> Black Bolt to death, but takes a full on Black Bolt scream right in his face. And just, uh, you know, like I said, it's got, got some uniform damage, and that's it. And then beats the living hell out of Black Bolt till he is dead. So, like I said, those are I, those are badass moments, but on a smaller scale. They're, you can't compete with the grand scale stuff, no. but, but I, I just wanted to bring it down on a more one-on-one here we go scale. So those are my three. Excellent choices. Indeed. Thank you. Excellent choices. Okay. So our, for our next segment, we've got critiques and criticisms. And since you guys have already gone first, I will let Dan go first for critiques and criticisms. Um, I don't necessarily like it when they have him fighting on the side of the good guys. That he has done kind of every once in a while. You know, he's done it with Annihilation. Um, You know, they did it with, to an extent, with the Infinity Gauntlet, um, uh, what does it say, sequel, Infinity War. Um, Infinity War, yeah. And he he always does it, you know, it's always his, um, you know, in his self-interest. But still, like, it just doesn't feel right to have him as someone that you're rooting for. 
Um, I did like a moment. Uh, I, I was considering, you know, putting in my badass moments, but it wasn't um, like really a badass moment, but it was a, a choir moment from the death of Captain Marvel when Captain Marvel dies and, you know, and, you know, Thanos just kind of helps usher him along and is, you know, kind of trying to ease his mind about, about going over and saying like, you know, this is just the next part of your, I forget exactly what he says, but like tries to comfort him and let him know like, this is okay. This is the next part of your journey. Like, so, you know, I like seeing where he has that level of respect for, you know, for someone, you know, that he's fighting against that he thinks is worthy, but that's different than actually fighting alongside them. So, you know, it, it's a novelty to see it one time, mm -hmm. but when they do it, you know, when they've done it multiple times, it's just, it, it's not something that I, that I really want to see. This isn't a character that I want to root for in any way. Very good. Very good. Jamie, how about you? You ready? Okay. No, so, no. Yeah, don't be. Count to five. Count to five. <laughs> okay. No, it, you're talking about a guy, a character, a villain that is so powerful in so many ways, yet they try and try to underutilize that power. And with me saying that, I'm talking about being defeated by Squirrel Girl. I'm talking about being in the Thanos copter and then getting arrested by the NYPD. I love uh, the Thanos copter. I love that one. I love Thanos copter, but still. Uh, and my biggest problem is he is inevitable. He is the one. He's the Mad Titan. He's Thanos. Why is he dead every six months? Yeah. They that, seem to kill him off and bring him back like every single time. Every, every time he has a great story arc. It doesn't matter what happens. Even ungrounded when, when, in under uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. He, great. They, they did a great job. And then the next series, he's just dead. Because Gamora killed him. Or Drax punched a hole through him. It, it makes no sense to have this being, this God, and just demoralize him like that to me. It, this is the villain that should be always around. And yet they find some nit way to be like, well, we just put a, you know, he, he had a will, so we're going to figure it out. And then they're like, oh, I'm <coughs> find my son and have him bring me back. It, it Why? It, it just makes zero sense to me. This character, Thanos should never be killed off. He should he could be beaten, bloodied, bruised, left on a farm, buried in underneath some corn. I don't care. Not dead. <clears throat> like Joe Pesci at the end of a uh, casino. Yes. There you go. There you go. Agreed. I agree. Oh no! Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Well, I'll go next, and I gotta I gotta agree with. But Jamie, that's that's a hundred percent what I, I I feel as well. They have this such powerful character, and he's always his end result is always death. I mean, he's he, but he never he reaches death. Yeah, but yeah. he never. Yeah, I understand that, but it's like they get, like the writers don't know how to defeat him properly. You know, I feel like that's one of the one of the issues that maybe that maybe I'm thinking of that way. But that's how I feel. And that's what a lot of these overpowered characters is. They yeah. make them so powerful. And, they, and we've talked about that on other episodes with like Firestorm and some of these other ones. They make the character so powerful, but then they don't know what to do with them. They don't know how to write them. And then, you know. Right. <laughs> what are we going to do? Just kill them. <laughs> Just kill them. Yeah. And it, it seems like when they have these overpowered characters, they need every single person in the universe to fight them to you know every single time it's not like he's taken out by squirrel girl or something like that you know which he was by the way yeah <laughs> but in uh, hilarious <laughs> fashion i might add uh, that's true <laughs> that's true but you know it it almost seems like he he is an epic level event every single time you know? yes and that just gets old after a while for me so how about you gary what do you think well i'm gonna say i like I like Thanos. If you, if, you, if you say love story, I'm going to kick your butt right now. <laughs> so because of the love story that it just draws you girl. in but takes you away. Yeah, that's the boy that loves a girl, Sal. That's, it's a boy <laughs> that loves a girl. I think that's pretty damn funny, though. You know, It is funny. It is good. And I think it's pretty damn funny. So, that, you know, I figured I would have a funny take on it. But I like him when he's not so mega-powered. I like the old, more of the, not the Thanos copper Thanos, but the, I'm talking the um, Avengers Annual 7, 
Marvel two and one annual two Thanos, the death of Captain Marvel Thanos, you know, and I also don't like him earthbound. I like him out in space. Yeah. I like yeah. Captain Marvel fighting him. I like Warlock fighting him. I like, you know, I, I like arrows having to deal with him. I like him when he's more of a cosmic threat and being, and not so much where, you know, he's brought to earth and earth is always at the center of everything. So I just, you know, I love how Starlin does his space epics. And, you know, he did that with DC too, with the um, Rand Thanagar war and with the, um, when he reintroduced Captain Comet, which is pretty funny when Starlin reintroduced Captain Comet, they told me what he goes, God, I hate this guy. And Starlin, he said, he went out, he smoked him a little herbal um, remedy. And after smoking some herbal remedy, he goes, I know how to do this guy. And then he comes back and he writes Captain Comet and loves it. So, you know, I, I just I just dig when he tells cosmic stories off of Earth more. So I like Thanos more when he's a, a cosmic entity out in the space waves, you know, out in the space waves and not so much where he is bound, especially when he's bound in Earth, you know, in our planet. So. OK, cool. Very good. All right, so for our next segment, we got top covers. And let's go ahead and start with me, Jamie. Throw up my top covers. All right, so I got Thanos Legacy number one. That's a variant, of course. Uh, I, I I love this because it just feels like you can see the madness in it with the you know with the energy coming off the the fist and everything. That's just pretty awesome. Uh, the next one I've got is um, Thanos uh, number six. And he looks like he's fighting the Phoenix Force here, and it looks like he's taking, it, he's doing as much uh, damage to it as possible, which just looks pretty badass to me. And I'm a, I'm biased to the Phoenix uh, fan, so I'll any any Phoenix cover I've got to have it. So that's pretty cool for me. Like last one I got, yep, last one I got here is another Thanos number one, uh, where he's punching the ground, and uh, again with the energy coming off the gauntlets. You got the mad face going on here. It's he looks insane. He looks pissed off. He looks powerful. It's then that's that's what describes the character for me. All right. So Dan, why don't you show us your covers? Yeah. Dan, why don't you show us your covers? All right. So I'll start with uh all the way on the end, the Infinity Gauntlet issue one. I mean, it's yep. just in it's an iconic cover. Um mm -hmm. You know, the way that Perez did it, where he's got the light beams coming off of, of each Infinity Gem and, has you know, essentially has a different panel in each one. But you see that, like you said, that look of madness in his face, especially the way he did the eyes there. And it's got yeah. that there over his shoulder, too. Like, it's just, like I said, it's an iconic cover and it just looks gorgeous. Uh, in the it middle, is. I yeah, in the middle, I have... Um, the uh, one shot, the Thanos imperative, and just how you see him again, like just looking uh, cold and driven and just completely heartless, really, and just terrifying. And everything is in this like blue muted color, except that you see this like fire burning in his eyes, and it looks like he's getting ready to blow up a planet. Yeah. Just, you know, very intimidating. And then all the way on the end, uh, Thanos annual number one, where you see him and he's there. He's looking again, looking intimidating, looking tough. He's got this hand open with the, uh, you know, where you see the energy he's got, but then it's got the the screaming skull that's kind of on fire, and he's standing inside of the skull too. Um, you know, that's really representing good. that, the, representing that obsession that he has with death. I felt like that was a good uh, representation of the character. Awesome. awesome. Like him. And you can't, you can't go wrong with the Perez cover, too. Cannot go yep. wrong with the Perez cover. All right, Jamie, how about you? Let's see your top covers. All right. So the first one I got is a variant cover for Thanos Death Note. This is the extreme uh, variant. It, it To me, it just looks like if Thanos was in Game of Thrones. Like it to me is just it looks badass throughout, and I don't I don't see anything wrong with it honestly. Like it just it it draws my attention every time I see it. Um, nice. Next up, I have the Infinity Gauntlet, but I have issue four, and it's Thanos literally standing there like you're in view of like the whole 
to me it's like a whole team looking straight at him and he's just like come on come and get me um he's so bad at he doesn't even need anything to stand with him. <laughs> no yep. he's got planets around him just be like come on let's do this yeah come let's on go. my last one is thanos issue 13 from thanos wins and it's literally him looking like he's just in victory with everyone dead behind him and beaten Nice. And I just thought, I just think that's the quintessential Thanos that you need. Yep. Awesome. Hey, let me ask you a question about that first cover of Death Notes. Is that like a skull for his knee armor? Because that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, that actually is. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's nice. pretty wicked. That's pretty wicked. All right, Uncle Gary, let's see your top covers. <clears throat> All right. So nice. let, let me ask you this. Is this, this is the first time I've seen where every cover has been 100% different yeah it doesn't happen often so usually there's like at least that. one that, that crossed i thought there was one but i was wrong yeah okay because I'll, I'll tell you the only reason i didn't put infinity gauntlet in there figured everybody would have that number one same so same. that's why i wanted to make sure i had three that you know weren't going to be on there so the first cover i have is from um, thanos seven that's jim starling cover and he's kneeling at the grave do we know whose grave that is well, it's Captain Marvel. Yeah. It is Captain Marvel's grave. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I just like that. Uh, a different take that we don't usually see on him. And as Dan alluded to earlier, the scene in the death of Captain Marvel where he accompanies Marvel to the other side, I like that quite a bit. And I thought that was quite poignant with Thanos that it, it you know, even though he's not human, it humanized him, if you know what I mean, you know. So I, I like that a lot. The middle one is um, Infinity Number One. It's a it's the R variant. Before Comic Logic, my comic store was Laughing Ogre, and Laughing Ogre and another store here in Northern Virginia painted Visions. Um, this was their variant that they had commissioned from Ron Lim. So it's kind of wow. cool for me because it's got local ties to it, and there's still a. Um, Laughing Ogre store in Ohio that was part of the chain. So it's still there. And the Painted Vision store is still here in Virginia, too. But anyway, I like it. It's got the local flavor. It's Ron Lim cover. And I like uh, it depicting Chanos as Thanos as what he is as a grandmaster, you know, um, with the chessboard in front of him. You know, when he's moving the pieces on the board, he's even got Captain America toppled there. But I really, I dig that a lot. So um, that's my cover there. And then the last one, so my introduction to Thanos was in the two-part um, Avengers Annual 7 that can, where Warlock, Adam Warlock was killed, and then the Marvel 2-in-1, the thing in um, Annual 2. And in this one, it's, it's also by Jim Starlin. And Thanos, at the end of this, Warlock comes out of the soul gym where he's been, where his spirit is residing, and he comes out of it and he turns Thanos to stone. And it's just, I just thought it was a, you know, we talk about how Thanos can't, Thanos can't really be killed, but I liked that he was transformed into stone and I, you know, with his arms outstretched, you know, um, and I, I just think it's a, a, a poignant, you know, poignant image. And I just love this cover. I love, you know, Warlock and the Soul Gem and um, Thanos getting ready to throw Spider-Man into the thing. And uh, I love the floating heads. I always love the floating heads on a cover. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. That's cool. why I like that Marvel two and one, and, and the nostalgia for me that that was you know, you know that was the end part of the first you know story I'd ever read with the character. And again, this is a much more you know not overpowered version of Thanos. You know, this is the you know a more of a you know demigod power, right? Powered individual. So you know, but I really love those stories and Starlin you know, wrote a man, drew him back in those days. So those are, those are my three. And I think it's really cool that we got 12 different covers and we gave people 12 different samples. Yeah. yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. So speaking of good stories, we're next segment up here is essential readings. Uh, so Gary, why don't you go ahead and kick us off and show us or tell us your essential <laughs> readings for our mad Titan. All right. So as I just alluded to, you know, my first uh, my first uh, introduction with the character was in Avengers Annual 7. And it continued into Marvel 2-in-1 Annual um, number 2 that we just saw the cover of. 
And Marvel Avengers Annual 7 is a pretty cool cover, too, but it just had the, a floating head of Thanos in the distance, but some really cool Avengers action in the front of it. But it's that two-parter where Warlock dies, and then um, in the second part, Warlock comes out of the Soul Gem where his spirit is residing, and he comes back to deal, you know, deal Thanos a blow where he, again, turns him to stone. I love those issues. They were poignant. They were, um, they had, you know, um, there was loss in it. There was, you know, the hero coming back from beyond to make one final, um, you know, one final heroic act you know, putting down the villain. I just love that. So those, you know, that's those, those two interconnected stories are my favorite of the character. After that, how, you know, I'm sure we're all going to say the infinity gauntlet, you know, that is just, that is the, the big bopper as far as it comes to stories with this character and everybody knows it. And the movies were, you know, based on uh, a lot of the content within that. Jim Starlin's story, George Perez and Ron Lim art, can't go wrong there. Big, grand, cosmic opus um, where everybody is involved. And I, you know, you know, enough said, right? It's, it's, you know, it's the, it's the big dog on the corner. And then um, finally, a much smaller, a supporting role in this, a very minor role in this, but in the death of Captain Marvel, the poignancy of that book. And I don't know, have you all fellows read that book? Actually, I don't think I've read The Death of Captain Marvel. No. I know yep. the story, but I haven't read it. Yep, I got okay, my copy Dan. behind me. Okay, so Dan can probably attest. That book brings a tear to your eye. I mean, yeah. Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel's dying of cancer. Now, oh, yeah. I don't know if you all knew this, but Jim Starlin wrote that because his dad died of cancer. And a lot of the feelings, you know, I've had this conversation in person with Jim Starlin. The conversations um, that I had was, you know, it's tough because I'd lost my mom to cancer. And, uh, and you know, it's the wasting away that he depicted of Marvel. <laughs> and he had these fresh feelings of his dad's demise. And he put it in a book. And it was just, it was amazing. And there's, um, there's a scene where all the heroes gather. And I know we're getting off the off the main character we're talking about, but I'm sorry for digressing. The, That's all right. the heroes, the heroes, um, are all coming to say goodbye to Marvel. And Spider Man, Peter can't handle it because he's, he's we're supposed to die in battle. We're supposed to be dying saving people. We're not supposed to die like this. And it was just just really hard, really tough. And then the biggest, you know, the the one of the biggest. Um, Greatest moments in the book is a scroll general comes to Marvel's bedside to salute him as not just being a great enemy, but the greatest warrior they have, the scrolls who are a martial race have ever faced. And he gives him a the scroll, the highest scroll medal of valor, and salutes him when his own people, the Cree, you know, revile him as a traitor. So yeah. that, that was like, oh my God, Dan, do you agree on that? Do you remember that part? Yeah, it's a, it's a very, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great book. And, you know, oh. like I said, you know, earlier too, especially the, you know, the kind of unexpected thing with Thanos where he, you know, right. comes to them as he goes, you know, to the other side. But yeah, the, the scene with, with Spider-Man was, was one that does really like hit you in the feels. Yeah, itch in the feels that, and like I said, the scroll general saluting him. And so then as he segues onto the other side, Thanos takes him on a few kind of like ceremonial little battles to get him ready, and then they go together to death. And, de and Thanos, who is dead at the time, he's dead at the time, Thanos, Captain Marvel, and death, the three of them walk off hand in hand. So I just, I just loved it. And when you know the backstory of why Starlin wrote it that way with his own personal history, it makes it even more poignant for me. So like I said, Thanos is just a supporting character in that, but in a very pivotal part of the book. So those are my three. Agreed. 
good choices, man. Good choices. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, Dan, why don't you go ahead and give us your, your uh, recommended readings? Um, the first one I have is uh, the Thanos War. It was from Captain Marvel 25 through 33. Uh, it was, you know, Thanos was still a somewhat new character at this point. And it was, I... Am I right, Gary? This was his first meeting with with Captain Marvel. I believe that was the first the first meeting with Marvel, and again, you know, really, really gave him the cosmic bona fides in that story. It was really great. Yeah, and um, you know, Captain Marvel even. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, it, it's a great story. It's got some great battles, and in this one, it's before the Infinity Gems, so Thanos is actually trying to get. A hold of <laughs> the cube uh so it's it, this is the story that really like put you know originally put thanos on the map as a big um as a big bad as a um as someone to be reckoned with next up i have uh thanos uh it's kind of a two-part it's thanos quest and infinity gauntlet you know i had to throw infinity gauntlet on there like gary said it's you know that's the one that's the one he's most well known for you know they based even before they decided to base the movie loosely on it, like that's still, you know, I think one of the best Marvel crossovers ever, and he's at the center of it. But Thanos Quest was a two issue, um, you know, almost like, you know, prequel to it, but, you know, came out before it that showed him actually going around and collecting all the Infinity Gems from all the different characters that had them. So, like, the Champion had one, and Grandmaster had one. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, the gardener had one and it was him going around and getting the gems from all of them and just showing different ways that he got them, you know, so some of them he got through brute force, some of them he got through cunning, some of them just through intelligence. And it shows, you know, how well-rounded, you know, a threat he can be as a character. And then it leads directly into Infinity Gauntlet, that plus, you know, some issues of Silver Surfer at the time, too. Uh, and then I also have the Thanos wins, which was just um, a really fun story uh, where it's like this older Thanos from the future um, brings the current day Thanos into, uh, you know, to help him uh, because he's killed everyone. And it's just him and Cosmic Ghost Rider. Who's <coughs> and yeah, he has the Hulk in prison as his dog. <laughs> And, yeah, that's pretty wicked. And, and he brings, you know, the for us the current day Thanos into the future to help him, as he says, "I need you to help me beat the fallen one." And Thanos is like, "What this joke of an ex herald? Like you need help with that?" And he's like, "No, things have changed." And it turns out in the future, the fallen one is the Silver Surfer, but he's now all black, and he has Thor's hammer. And when they ask him, like, "Well, why did you?" You know, he starts battling with him, and they say, "Why did you take so long?" to come after me and he goes i had to wait until i was worthy and then he lifts up the hammer but it's just it's got some um some awesome fights you see the you know you see the um interaction between the old thanos and the current thanos which is a lot of fun and i almost listed as a badass moment too the fight they had with silver surfer where he ends up like even the the arm that he's got the hammer with where you're like chops his arm off and like beats him to death on the hammer and it's just fantastic and it shows how brutal he can be and then what he does what he does with his older self at the end is just is just cruel beyond cruel and i don't want to i don't want to spoil it because you should definitely go definitely go read it cool excellent good choices. stuff all right, I will go next. Jamie, you can bring up my recommended readings. Thank you very much. I chose—I did not choose Infinity Gauntlet just because I felt like everybody would choose it, so I left it off. Uh, but I went with these other stories because I liked the way some of them were written or played out. And that goes with my first one, Thanos Zero Sanctuary. Uh, it starts off with, like, Thanos is dead. Oh, my God. He has been killed by Gamora. And it kind of does a does a retro thing. Goes back. You see him when he takes Gamora, and then you know how he shapes and molds her into the greatest assassin the, the galaxy's ever seen, type of thing. And you don't know, you know, you, 
the audience is left to wonder, you know, did he mold her this way or was she always like this? And he just kind of brought it out of her to begin with. But, you know, this, and you see the, the unholy black order form in this, uh, this series as well, which I loved. I like that uh, part of it. So this is definitely one to check out because it kind of gives you a little bit of back history as well. And definitely check it out. Uh, my next one is Thanos Epiphany. Like you're taking a shower and you think of something great. Oh my God, Epiphany. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, where um, he's held the ultimate power in his hands and slipped away again and stuff like that. And he's been thwarted so many times and he's got these inner demons. So you kind of like thinking of the mindset of Thanos. What's driving him towards his goals and his desires? This came out in 2003, by the way. And it was issues one through six. Uh, so this is it. I wouldn't say two or what, 20 some years ago? Yeah, 20 years ago. So this is a pretty uh, older title, and I liked it for that. Uh, my last one is Thanos Volume 1. This came out in 2016 and uh, 2000, 2018, 1 through 6. Thanos Returns. So, of course, he's got to come back. He's Thanos. He's always coming back, you know? But, you know, uh, it's it's kind of like a, he's going on a path of destruction throughout the galaxy. It's a really dark tale of that. And it's just something you see. It's not too much braced on Earth. It's mostly throughout the galaxy. It is path of destruction. And it's definitely something to check out. Mm -hmm. So, Jamie, let's see your recommended readings. All right. I like him, Sal. Good job. Thank you. <clears throat> so, kind of going with what Dan had with Thanos wins, I took the whole second volume. Uh, <laughs> because the Omnibus. Here, because Lemire to Cates' writing on that was, I thought, some of the best I've read in a long time. Um, I won't go too much more into it. Dan pretty much covered most of it. Obviously, I have the Infinity Gauntlet on there. Um, usually you try to be different on takes, but there's no way to be different when you have this kind of powerhouse of a event. It, yeah. It's the event that set up events. For Agreed. Me. They're still doing stuff based on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're still trying to reinvent the wheel with it. And you just can't. Uh, my last one is the Thanos Imperative. And like you talked about earlier, Dan, it was the one issue. But this is an, this is an issue to me where there's nothing really too spectacular, like different about Thanos. It's just straight. Thanos, the whole issue, just the per the the Mad Titan you want, mm. and if to me, if you want to get a good glimpse of them, that's where I would go to. Very good, good choices, man. I love it. Love it. I don't think yep. I've I don't think I've I don't think I've read the uh, the Imperative uh, storyline. It's very good. I'm gonna Can check I show some fellas here. Infinity Gauntlet, show it. right? Of course. Show it. Do it. It's got it's got it's got scribbles. Oh, it's got scribbies. Oh, oh, it's got Scribble. a lot of them. It's got yeah, that's so, by that's... a guy named Jim Starlin. <laughs> another guy named Ron Lim. Hmm? Jim Starlin, <laughs> yep. Ron Lim, and the late great George Perez. Nice. You know, that that's totally messed up that book, Gary. Just send it to me. I'll take care I'll, of it. I'll okay. Right, it's not men anymore because it's been written on. So yeah, yeah, really yeah. Like, yeah. Come on. Just send it's it like to me. I'll the Send to me, I'll take care of it for you, all right? I don't want you, you to have I'll, I'll even do one better. I'll pay for the shipping, and I'll take oh, care wow. of it. <laughs> I read something once where they asked George Perez in an interview why he didn't draw the entire series. You know, he started it, and Ron Lim finished it. And he said, he's like, you know, he's like, I shouldn't have drawn it at all. It should have been Ron Lim to draw the entire thing. Mm. I did not know that. Yep. Interesting. Uh, uh, so... This is, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this just because George Perez isn't <laughs> signing any new ones. Yeah, that's true. I, I think we can find some on that eBay and, site and, for you. Yeah, it's true. And, and I gotta tell you this, George Perez, I got to meet him one time, and he was an absolute prince of a man. You know, yeah. he was, he was fantastic. That's why I say, go to these shows, go to these cons meet these people because you know what we just lost keith giffen you know I, I i i was lucky enough to have met him got a signature so many greats my god that i that i've got to see that are gone denny o'neill neil adams bernie wrightson yeah. darwin cook keith giffen now george perez 
see these guys while you can because man they're not going to be here forever and you know you, you sit there and you may only have a few minutes but it's kind of meaningful yes you have the signature and you keep that forever but there's also something to be said for telling these fellas and these gals how much their work is meant to you and that means something to them you know so it's it just you know that's my public service message go out there meet these people and just tell them how much you've enjoyed their work so right yeah. thanos may be around forever but those creators and artists will not be they will not be yep all right well then that that's a good segue to our next segment gary thank you very much for that this is oh, our absolutely. next segment is best artist and author and this could be any combination of artist and author that's been on the series <clears throat> you know throughout the whole thanos runs so dan why don't you go ahead and kick us off and get us your best artist and author please um as Jamie said, with writing for that one, uh, the one series where I went from what, Lemire to Kate's, I mean, both of them were great, especially Kate's at the end of it. But when it comes to writing Thanos, I got to go with this creator, Jim Starlin. Like he's written, you know, he wrote um, Thanos Quest and the Infinity Gauntlet and the Thanos War, like all that were in my recommended readings. You know, he just, you know, he, he was writing him in Silver Surfer. Uh, which Infinity Gauntlet was originally going to be a, just a Silver Surfer storyline until Marvel was like, no, th this is too big. Like this needs to be its own thing. Like, so when it comes, you know, when it comes to running Thanos, like he's he's great with that big epic cosmic stuff that works well with him. And for artists, I, I got to go with Ron Lim. You know, again, like he was he was drawing him on Silver Surfer. He drew Thanos Quest. He drew Infinity Gauntlet. When you look, when you take a look at our covers, I think all of us had um had covers uh you know almost all of us had covers that were drawn by ron Lim. like he just you know he nails the characters uh as far as i'm concerned he's the best one that i've seen excellent choices excellent choices jamie how about you all right well kind of talked about it earlier i gotta go for writing i have to go with donny cades on daniel's wins i thought that was a powerful series all together i know lemire started it he took the end but to me that was that's the thing that i've wanted and craved for a very very long time um <clears throat> as for my artist gotta go with prince all right there's i i, I want to go with Lim, but perez's work just stands out when it comes to that character <clears throat> i agree with that i agree with that Okay, so why don't I go next? And my characters, uh, well, my characters, my author is an author. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Jim Starling for a writer, and I, go, I went with Perez. Lim was a very close second for me. I would almost consider them a tie, but I got to lean towards Perez. So, Good choice. How about you, Gary? Yep. All right. Well, mine is going to be awfully redundant. Uh oh <laughs> But in a different way. Jim Starlin, I'm going OG. Jim Starlin, who created it, and no one writes Cosmic Odysseys, and he did write Cosmic Odyssey for DC. He did. Man. Nobody writes Cosmic Odysseys like Jim Starlin does, and that's in his wheelhouse. He is a sci-fi master when it comes to writing these great epics that take place in deep space and on other worlds. But his, you know, his he's the one that brought. Than, you know, brought the character into life and fleshed him out. And I just love everything he did. And with my artist, I'm going with a fellow by the name of Jim Starlin. I love <laughs> the OG character that he created. I love the look of Warlock that he created. Gamora, Pip the Troll. I love the whole Starlin look. And the whole Starlin feel. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Perez and Lim. I think they are fantastic. But I just think this is a real unique situation where the creator is, you know, the writer and creator is also the artist. And I love the look that he gave the character with from the beginning. I love the long, lean, angular, you know, the long, lean, you know, figures that he draws and the power and the, um, the grace of his characters and the, you know, the comedic and <clears throat> the comedic look of Pip the Troll, right? All that just tie in. I love how how sexy Gamora was, you know how, you know how how intimidating Drax was, how 
you know, off the charts scary Thanos was and how, how noble Adam Warlock was. So all that, all that, you know, Starlin, I think, embodied in his, in his work. So for me, it's Jim Starlin and it's Jim Starlin. Awesome. Well, good choices, man. Good choices. Good choices all around. Yeah, everybody did. Amazing stuff there. Good stories, good covers. Amazing. This was a great episode. Any last minute thoughts? Any last minute things? What would you like to see Thanos do next? Kill Cyclops again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I everybody, think I've got this power. Remember, every. <laughs> oh, every, no. What? He everybody from Cody. <laughs> everybody oh, from yeah. Kodak needs to send Jamie some Cyclops merchandise for Christmas. Yes. Uh, I'd say one that's thing. A, that's uh, a good idea, Dan. I think I'm going to do that. One thing I would have. <laughs> I ain't going to my P.O. box anytime soon. <laughs> well, you know, I bet the Cyclops merchandise you should send him is the first appearance of Cyclops. He'd probably be okay with that. You ever seen a comic book eaten live on the stream before? <laughs> I don't I'm going to send would a eat that. You wouldn't eat that comic live. Well, you got sent his first if appearance. If you did that, you would also share. Wow. Live, you would also see Sal's head explode. <laughs> I'll and send you a slab, and I'll just want you to see, uh, eat that. Does it, God, does anyone here have a Cyclops' first appearance? You. Oh, no, you do. You do. Uh, oh, no, I'm I'm sure. Sure. One, one thing that would have been a great crossover back in the 90s is if they would have done a crossover with uh, Chaos Comics with uh, Evil Ernie and Lady Death. Oh, and, then you, and then you could have... Uh, you could have, you know, had Thanos be like, "All right, Death. Well, this Lady Death here is kind of a looker, and you know, she's interested in what I got going on here. And maybe you get some uh, Death and Lady Death jealousy, and then you get some Evil Ernie jealousy too." Can, I'll take Lady you know, Death. She's a little hotter. Can know? I? Can I? Can I throw a? Uh, I never do this. Uh, well, honorable mention in for my readings. Sure. Unholy alliances. Okay. Green Lantern, Silver yeah, Surfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My friend, I totally no. forgot about that one. <laughs> friends, friends of the station, Ron Mars and Daryl Banks. Yes, yes. Daryl Banks' favorite comic he ever drew. I think that was one of my uh, three recommended readings when we did the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern episode. Yeah. yeah. It was. I remember that. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a wrap then. We can close out this show and. Oh. We could, I what, got what's one up? more team up. Do it. One more team up. What is it? Um, Thanos and his crew and the new gods. Yeah. You know, how great would Finally. that be? Yes, yeah. that, that would be pretty amazing to have both of these dark gods combined. So that would that be, be an epic cool. throwdown. Yep. That so would be. Yeah, when they did Amalgam, didn't they combine Thanos and Darkseid? I think they did, yes. Did they? Yeah. Yeah, they, they did. did. They actually did. That's right. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. I can't remember what they named that character, but yeah. I think it was like Thane side or something like that. It should have been it should have been Dark Nose or something like that. Yeah, Dark Nose. Dark Nose. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and wrap this up. As always, I am your host wrap for it this up. comic character of, comic character of the week. I am Sal, the Slab Guy. You can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comment Corner and on Instagram as the Slab Guy 77 when Dan the Man allows it. Down below me, Dan the Man Kelly, tell them where they can find you. Uh, check me out on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. Uh, go like some posts, go give me a follow, and um, yeah, buy some commissions. And this guy beside me has got some yes. stuff going on he's going to tell you about right now. All the time. All the time. Please, please. I am proud, one of the proud co owners of Comic Logic. The, um, we are the only uh, comic book store in Loudoun County, Virginia. We're here in Northern Virginia. Please come see us. You can see me every Wednesday. Get my weekly fix right here in the main lines, injecting the comics, the new the new stuff. Um, on October 29th, it's a Sunday, we're having our sec our semi-annual lot con, and we will turn our parking lot into a little mini con. We'll have we'll have comics, we'll have toys, we'll have um, local authors, local artists, and we will have a trunk or treat for the kids. There'll be a little costume contest. Um, we're having luminaries there. Dan will be there and Sal will be there bringing, bringing family members even. So we'd love to have you there. Come see I us. I expect footage. Um, 
<laughs> oh yeah, should have footage. October uh, 29th, Sunday. Please come see us. Also, I um, under Facebook. I'm on Op. I'm under the name Op Taylor, and I post the comic cover of the day on our good friend Archduke Kevy's site, Comic Character of the Day that he started. Dan and Sal, frequent contributors there. So you can you can see all of us interacting on that site. Jamie's always commenting on that site. So please come see us there. And thanks to Archduke Kevy for kind of bringing us all together. And then let's go back up top to the man, the visionary that started this wonderful channel that has over 1,000 subscribers. The man with the vision that started it all, the founder, all hail, <laughs> J-Dunn. Oh, I thought you were going to say Darkhawk. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, it happened. It finally happened. I'm Dark Hawk. I, I mean, that's a given. Sales, sales, so excited about that he's gonna slab me. Um, you're not nine point eight though. You're not nine point eight though. Gary, your buddy. Uh, Sal used to slab people at the morgue. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, your uh, your buddy Sapphire Mint uh, or Sapphire Glade Comics said uh, about your book, "Not Mint, Get Me a Fresh One." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. There you go. But yeah, we did hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. We will be having our giveaway. Um, the giveaway closes on the 15th, which is to probably be out after it. So if you're seeing this live, still have a chance. Um, and we will be announcing the winner on the 17th. So stay tuned for that live. Uh, guys, again, thank you. Uh, all the hard work these guys have put in, all the hard work everyone's contributed, and it took you guys to watch and spread the word. I mean, it, 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 I never thought we would hit this level. And now I feel like it's just the beginning and there's gonna be a lot more to come. So again, check us out. We're on all the <laughs> socials at the Codex station. I love every single one of you. I love this team with my whole heart. It's, I can't even describe it, but I can't wait to get to the next one. <laughs> yes. And uh, let's go ahead and give a tease. Who are we covering for our next comic character week? Just a tease. It's it's a color witch. <laughs> crimson. <laughs> I'm thinking crimson. Well, somehow. That's just, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Not a sandwich. Thank you again. Not a sandwich. <laughs> Not a sandwich. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you know, the, white I mean... witch for the, the white witch for the Legion is really obscure. I'm surprised we're going there. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, all right. Yeah, we are. Because we mm -hmm. like to go there. We like to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> <laughs> boldly go. Bold, bold, boldly. Boldly. Yeah, boldly, boldly go. <laughs> where are we going to boldly go? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Let's, we got to wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen. So have a good night and thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. Yeah. Sal, why are there two gaping holes?